same time. So, so exciting. And uh, let's see. So anyway, I am wondering, are you addicted to being single? Might sound that might sound totally crazy, like addicted being single, and let, yet you find yourself going, "No, I want a man. I want a relationship. I want intimacy," and uh, and you're saying that, but here it is, the holidays, and you're finding yourself single again. You know, maybe you find yourself, uh, maybe you're dating, maybe you're not, maybe relationships never last very long, but here you are single and complaining that you want a relationship. If this sounds like you, then today's talk of single addiction is meant for you. So before we dive in, I want to actually uh, describe what, when I looked up um, uh, addiction, here's what I found. It was not the greatest uh, definition, but... Addiction is a treatable, good news, condition, chronic medical disease involving complex interactions among brain circuits, genetics, the environment, and an individual's life experiences. It says people with an addiction use substances or engage in behaviors that become compulsive and often continue despite harmful consequences. So that's our definition. That's where we're starting today. And this really just came to me very recently, this idea of being addicted to being single, even though you so want love. I'm Dr. Kelly Martin Shu, Amazon bestselling author, speaker, and transformational coach for women. And I can't wait to share with you what I'm finding about this addiction to being single. So before we dive in, I will tell you uh, what we're going to be covering today. And then I'll tell you a little story to make sense of this because it's not addiction as we normally think of addiction. Um, so I'll tell you a little story little afternoon story and then we'll talk about your current brain wiring and uh, what is causing you to repeat this pattern of being single over and over and over again we'll talk about how to rewire your brain so to create new circuitry so uh, so that addiction to being single doesn't keep on perpetuating itself and, uh, and then we'll close out with a solution, several solutions, of one of which I've got a live event coming up in Boulder that I can't wait to share with you because we've got some scholarships. All right, so let me first tell you about, um, tell you a little story. So I can remember it wasn't, actually, I, I think about it, it wasn't that long ago, uh, although it was over a decade ago, when I was single and so frustrated. You know, I was uh, putting myself out there. I was on some dating apps. And I remember, you know, going out with friends and going out salsa dancing and following all the rules of what you should do as a single person looking for love. I was trying to everything and being so, so frustrated and attracting the wrong kinds of guys. And, uh, and I couldn't seem to break the pattern, to break the loop. And I'll never forget the date that I went to. And it was with uh, what is now my husband. And I, you know, we had had an amazing dinner. He had taken me to a concert. Things were really good. And I'm thinking, oh my gosh, wow, this is awesome. And then the moment where I was like really realizing it was different, he said, when can I see you again? I was like, when can you see me again? Oh my gosh, that's hot. That's like a man who knows what he wants and he knows he wants to see me again. I'm not waiting for the hopefully he texts or that whole thing. But here's what happened next. I kind of went into that. Not I kind of. I totally went into the knee jerk reaction of uh, the whole single thing, the self sabotaging thing. I didn't even realize I was doing it. And my immediate re reaction is like, I was like, oh, no, I, I don't know. Yeah, I'd like to see you. I'm, I'm not really sure. And so I'm backing out and backing out. And, uh, and he's like, well, a girl's got to eat. You know, why don't we, why don't we, uh, this, what did he say? Why don't we go out to dinner? On, it was a Sunday night. He's like, why don't I take you out for dinner on Tuesday or Wednesday, uh, Tuesday or Wednesday night? And I said, oh, no, I don't do, I don't date during the week. Like, I had a rule. I don't date during the week because I have a busy work schedule. I'm too busy. I'm too busy. And, 
And he's like, yeah, but even with your busy practice, like a girl's got to eat. He said, how about I make you dinner at home? And I couldn't say no. I couldn't say no. And that was really what I realized a beginning of a shift in me as a single woman with all my rules around dating and, uh, and what that looked like. That was the beginning of the shift of the self-sabotage because truly I was addicted to being single. Single. So just like I said, we're gonna we're gonna talk a little bit about that and what I mean by that. So what I mean by that is that there are certain patterns. You know, as human beings, we are wired to move in a direction towards our dreams, and we will do so and be motivated by one of two things or both things. We will either be motivated by pain or motivated by pleasure, or a combination of both. Now, the way I look at it, looking back, is I thought that I was a person that was motivated by pleasure. I mean, I thought, oh, I want a relationship, I want a partner, I want to be able to have those conversations at the end of the day, I want to share my life with someone, I want to start a family, like it seemed that it was all moving towards those pleasurable things, and yet, there was also a lot of pain in my mind. You know, what did it mean to date? So if you're listening, in, uh, in the comment section, if you can say, yes, can you relate to wanting something, but then like having your foot on the gas and having your foot on the brakes. So it's like, yes, I want a relationship. No, I don't. Yes, I want a relationship. No, I don't. So if you can relate to that, put yes in the comment section. So here's what I know is that the hind brain, the back part of the brain that's wired from the primal cave woman in you, its number one job is to protect you. It's to protect you. It's to keep you safe. And so, you know, when you think about being relationship in an intimate partnership, what's scary about that? Well, for many women, they might say, oh my gosh, I still carry so much shame around my body and I wouldn't want a man to you know, really see me the way I am right now. Or maybe the pain is, oh my gosh, I've been heartbroken before and I, I don't really want to ever experience that heartbreak again. You know, maybe the pain looks like maybe you weren't treated well by a past partner. So deep within that part of the brain that's trying to keep you safe, it's leading the show. And because if you aren't in a relationship, then someone um, can't you know, hurt you again, right? So we can start to see when you look at your past, what is your past relationship to relationships? And so that's the foot on the brake. That is the one thing that is stopping you. Now, circling back to addiction, is that we tend to, in that trying to stay safe, we just become addicted to that. It's like a, it's like a warm blanket, you know? And, uh, and so while we still have these stories running, um, being single keeps you safe. It keeps you safe, okay? We can become addicted to being safe. You know, staying at home on a Friday night and not going on that date. You know, based on my story, I could have played it safe and just said no to the offer to go on a date. Why? Because underneath that, that self-sabotaging behavior was I was fearful of falling in love, truly. I was fearful of losing my freedom as a woman. That would have been painful. Uh, I liked being in control of my life. I didn't have to uh, adapt what I did day to day by asking for someone's, you know, what, what I thought would be asking for someone's permission. These are all things that the independent woman specifically is associated with pain and relationship, okay? So that is, we can become addicted to being alone because being alone, we are safe. We are more in control, even though we might also be depressed, sad, lonely, right? We're willing to deal with that because we know it. Okay, so your current wiring. I want you to think about it. What is your current wiring that's negative that links you to relationship? You know, what is it that's painful? When you think about being in a relationship, let's get really real here. 
what is it that when you think of being in relationship is painful for you? What is it? Because we need to identify that so that we can become aware of that. And what is pleasurable? When you think about moving into relationship, the intimate partnership, what is pleasurable for you, right? Is it those long, intimate conversations? Is it being held and cuddled? You know, what is it that's pleasurable when you think of being in relationship, okay? So the easiest way to do this is to actually make a list. At the top, put being in relationship and write down all the positive things that are associated with being in a relationship. And then all the negatives, the feeling safe, feeling you know, um, like you don't want to be rejected, like all of the, all of the things. So have your list of pain and pleasure and take a look at it. Take a look at that because that is your current wiring. Let's go back to that primal brain. Remember I said the, we are wired to keep us safe. So the destination being an intimate partnership, being in partnership, we need to rewire the brain so that the pain of being single is greater than the pain of being in intimate partnership. Let me say that again, if you wanna write this down. We want to get you to the place where the pain in being in, uh, in relationship, I'm sorry, the pain of being single is greater than the pain of being in relationship. And if you are a single woman right now and you find yourself in this over and over and over again, then my guess is that pain column is more powerful than the pleasure column. All right. So we are wired to keep ourselves safe, avoid pain at any cost. But then we also can be wired to be inspired to be pleasure seeking individuals. All right. And most people, they want the pleasure of the relationship, but they keep on pressing the brakes and they keep on pressing the brakes. So first step, tell, you know, write down what is your current reality of pain and pleasure when you think of being in an intimate partnership. So here's the key. Number two, we're going to talk about the new wiring. You know, Dr. Joe Dispenza says the thoughts and beliefs that wire together, I'm sorry, that fire together will be wired together. Said differently, how you think about relationships, you've been thinking about this for a long period of time, and the longer that you relate to being single and what that means for you, it becomes real to you to the point that in the check boxes of like, I am a single woman or I am in a relationship right? You get so used to, I am a single woman, that you actually think that that is going to be your reality possibly forever. There's an identification with that. Hello, Julia. Hello, Dr. Michelle. Shout out to Dr. Michelle. I had an awesome adjustment with her in Hawaii. So love her. Love her. Look her up. Okay. So the new wiring is we need to create a situation, a mind wiring where moving you into partnership is uh, more pleasurable and less painful than being single, all right? So you wanna make it so in your mind that being single is more painful than being in a relationship. We need to tip the scales. In addition to that, we're gonna, we're gonna put a little sugar on top, which is, the pleasure of being in partnership is greater than the pleasure of being single. Because let's face it, there are some things that are great about being single, right? And right now, that could be running the show. So when we talk about the, the, you know, addiction, it really is about doing the same thing over and over and over again when you know that it's not really serving you. And so if in your heart you're a single woman and you know that, that, that you want and desire love, that you want and desire partnership, then you have the opportunity here to rewire your brain. So you'll want to have a new list of your new re, your rewiring 
and again, start to stack it in your favor. So start to come up with more things of why it's painful for you to be single. You know, what's painful about that? Is it, is it a being the third wheel at the Christmas party or the holiday party that's coming up? Is it that when you come home at the end of the day, it, the, the, it's quiet and there's no one to talk to? Really, I want that list of being single and the pain of it, that list needs to be long, really needs to be long. And the pleasure needs to be smaller. It needs to be smaller, okay? And then we're gonna flip it for being in relationship. Is this making sense? If it's making sense, heart me, thumbs up, right? We have the brain that's wired to be addicted to being single, single and safe. And then we have the brain that's wired for love. I want you to have the love and I've been able to help over 10,000 women over the world, you know, recommit to intimate partnership and, and sacred sexuality and they get to have the love that they've always wanted. But it does require a rewiring, you know, a different way to think about relationships. Going back to me and my story, uh, that moment when Richard was like, you know, when can I see you again? And I almost went into that addictive place, that self-sabotaging place that put my hands up and energetically was pushing him away because I was scared. I was scared. I was scared of giving up my independence. I was scared of being vulnerable. I was scared of really showing a man my insides of, of like what, what makes me, what, what challenges do I have in life? You know, those things that make us human. So uh, if you like what you're hearing today and you actually, you want to make 2020 like your year to find love, I have something so exciting I want to share with you. And that is we are now releasing to the public a handful of partial scholarships to my event. Partial scholarships. The event is called Magnetize your man it is an event we are renting out the theater and we over the course of three days we're going to teach single successful women to break the mold break the mold of their past uh, we have siloed out each day we have an outcome for you day one you are going to learn how to release your past you know, be done with it once and for all so you don't keep on recreating a past, that past that no longer serves you. That's day one. Day two, I'm going to help you to reclaim your feminine power. You know, get into that place where you know you are worthy of love and you can magnetize the man of your dreams. You've got that power and that ability to manifest, we're reconnecting you to your feminine power so that you can be all of you, not too much, all of you. There's no such thing as a woman being too much. It's a lie that we tell ourselves. So that's day two. And then day three, we're gonna teach you to rewrite your love story. Rewrite your love story. So I've got limited partial scholarship. The value on this three-day event, women are going to be flying in from all over the world. We already are selling tickets, and they're going fast. So the value on this, I mean, imagine what would life look like in 2020 if you magnetize your man? What would it be worth to you, right? Would you be willing to fly to Boulder, Colorado and get this handled? 2020, new vision, new partnership. It is your time. In the comments, I'd love to hear you, you know, if you want to put, it's my time, and, and, and say yes. If you feel like it's your time, say yes. And uh, the value on this is $997, and we've got a handful of par partial scholarship for only $97. Only 97 we will get this handled for you. Go to Dr. Kelly Live. Dot com. That's D-R, Kelly, K-E-L-L-Y, live.com. I can't wait to see you in Boulder, Colorado, and as we join in a sisterhood. And, you know, magic happens when women gather with a singular focus. 
Imagine what it would feel like no longer trying to figure this out all at all on your own. You're going to have a sisterhood, a tribe uh, with you that's committed to you magnetizing your man this year. So again, I've got limited availability for my scholarships. Go to drkellylive.com and join me next week, same time, same place. Have a fantastic day. Thanks.